Hey everyone, I am so excited to do this tag because I was tagged by my new friend, uh, Lisa SZ09. I've been a loyal subscriber of her for years, but we've just recently connected outside of YouTube and it's been just a pleasure to end 2013 with a new friend. And so it's called the Make Up Your New Year's Resolution Tag. I think that's what I printed it right off the off of her page. And I have written some things down because I'm kind of flighty and <laughs> I'll forget things, but most of this will be off the cuff. And I just want to point out, if you're looking closely and you notice that my nails look terrible, I had on the most beautiful color, it's Zoya Yana, and um, I ordered my three nail polishes from the Zoya promotion, I think it's Color Your World, where you ordered three for $12, including shipping, and I was so excited, and I was shaking one up, I was actually on the phone with Lisa, and I was shaking one to swatch, and it went flying out of my hand and shattered all over the floor. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the picture. And I think I, I shrieked quite loudly and hung up on Lisa. But um, I cleaned it all up and it ruined my manicure. And so as soon as this video is over, I just wanted to let you know that I will be um, painting my nails with this Zoya Pixie Dust called Arabella. Because I think it goes very nicely. Oh, see, they're still very nicely with my shirt. And it's the color of the year. So there you go. Uh, Pantone color of the year. Okay, now that is done, let's get to the fun of the tag. So I will put all the questions, I'll type them out below, and I will tag people, I will not shout out people like Romper Room, I will, if you're tagged, I will put your name down below, and if you're not tagged, do it anyway, because I always forget somebody, and I hate that, and I feel bad. And um, okay, so number one, what is a technique you've improved on during the past year? Um, it's a very specific technique, and it's that I've realized that because of my hooded eye, that um, I should put my my not I should put my crease shade up a little higher, and actually bring my lid color up a little higher as well. And I it makes my eyes look bigger, and I've been working on that, and I think I've got it okay. Like I, I never think I'm going to get it 100% right, but lately I think I've been liking my eye makeup better. Of course, today I'm not wearing my eyes like that, but okay. Number two, what is your overall most used makeup product this year? I think the product I've replaced the most is my Urban Decay 24-7 concealer pencil. I love that concealer pencil. That is the concealer I always go back to. It's my no fail. I'm wearing it now. I'm mostly, usually in the shade DEA. And then in the summer I'm more NSA. So there you go. Number three, what brand would you like to try in the coming year? Um, I think I'd like to branch out with NARS a little bit. Uh, a lot of the people that I've been watching recently on YouTube use a lot of NARS eyeshadows, a lot of NARS lipsticks. I've really been enjoying my NARS Sheer Glow Foundation again, although it's a shade too light. And so I need to go get, um, I really, really like it. So I wanna go and get a, the shade that more accurately matches my skin tone. And this year I wanna indulge in like just a crazy splurge. So I'm thinking at some point this year, a one Tom Ford product. I'm not sure which. Probably a quad, an eyeshadow quad, but I don't know. I just feel like it's my money and I, I, would just, I just want one really amazingly cool product. So that's probably it. Um, part of that same question is which of your favorite products has been the most difficult to replace as a cruelty-free alternative and what are you using now? Sorry guys, not, I mean, I'm a dog lover and I'm going to get slack for this, but or flack for this. Cut me some slack. Don't give me flack. Um, not really much, although my shampoos, I have to say mostly I've replaced all my shampoo products, I think, with cruel, my hair products, mostly, mostly, with cruelty free. It's not that I, I don't even want to get into it, it's a whole political thing, but first and foremost, the product has to work, and if it happens to also be cruelty free, that's, that's just an added bonus. Are there any products that you want to use up this year? Not really. I don't purchase a product and then decide I hate it and have to use it up. If I really don't like something, I'll either throw it away if it's something that I can't give to someone else, like mascara, or I'll find it a new home. Makeup Rescue. Uh, favorite winter activity and what do you wear and how do you wear your makeup for it? Um, I hate winter, which is why I chose to live in Texas. So my favorite winter activity is avoiding the winter and the slightest hint of coldness I am in the house. And um, so yeah, so how do I wear my makeup for it? Probably like most people wear their makeup for spring and fall because that's what my, <laughs> it is like 65 degrees right now, don't hate me. Uh, I do enjoy pulling out like the layered pieces like these furry vests and my jeans and boots, like, you know, not winter boots, but riding boots, that kind of stuff. 
I can't really wear that six to eight months out of the year here. What is one bad makeup habit that you wanna break in the coming year? I don't think I have any bad makeup habits anymore, but I'd like to get, I, I, you know, I see, keep reaching for the same colors of eyeshadow, the same colors of lipstick. Maybe branching out a little in, in the color selection would not be a bad idea. Uh, favorite vegan clothing, or any clothing, I guess, to keep warm and dry in the winter. Like I said, um, I like layering the fur vests, the faux fur, I should say, this is faux. This I got, for anyone who lives, I think it's, it might be Texas-wide, but I mean, for sure, San Antonio, uh, Cavenders has really cute fur vests. I recently, that's where I got this one. I recently saw Target's got some faux fur vests. I love them, and I think they're a great layering piece, and I'll even wear them, like, under a big wool coat, and it scrooches it up, and it looks like I'm wearing this really luxurious scarf, so, um, loving the fur vests. Faux, faux fur. Right, Mimi? We don't want to wear any of your fellow mammals. Okay. Uh, a fellow YouTuber you really love watching this year. It's a great way to share the love. Well, first, I want to start out with a tiny, mini little rant that there are quite a few people that have stopped watching this year. And that is because the longer I do YouTube, the more I'm aware of what kind of goes on behind the scenes. And a, a lot of, not a lot, no, yeah, a lot of the bigger YouTubers that I used to love watching I know that now their videos are just one giant product placement video after another, and they're not disclosing it to the viewers that they were sent those products to review, that they've been paid to review those products, and I know that it's a fact because I've been contacted by the same PR companies and I've turned them down, and then I turn on a video and there they are saying, oh, and by the way, this is my new favorite blah, 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 and isn't that cool, and, and here's the link, and I'm going, okay, so that's my little rant. So I have, I have got rid of a lot of subscriptions for people that do that. It really upsets me. Um, I started YouTube videos because I wanted to connect with other women on an honest level and tell you what I really feel and I think that's what YouTube is supposed to be about and it makes me sad that it has changed. But there are still quite a few really awesome people out there and a few of the ones that I've discovered just this year are um, my friend Erin Busby Style. Um, she's my friend in real life so of course I, I love, I, I want to say only nice things about her, but honestly, I've learned so much about how to wear my clothes. Um, stuff you take for, she takes for granted. I keep telling her, you take it for granted, but most of us don't know how to put our clothes together like you do. So I learned a lot from watching her videos. And I'll link, you know, I'll put everybody's name down there. Jamie Greenberg, she's a celebrity makeup artist in LA. And she's also a makeup artist for Mark, part of the Avon company. And I really, I love her videos. I don't want to go too much into it. I've done, I've talked about all these, most of these people in other videos, but love, love, love her. And her videos are like this long. So if you don't have a lot of time, she packs a lot in in five minutes. Um, Kristen Game, I've gotten to know her in real life and on YouTube. And she is just such a great source of information. And she's smart and she's funny. And I don't know, I'm a Midwestern girl. And so I guess I just have a thing for other Midwest girls. I like watching Kristen a lot. Miss May 27 is another new one to me, I think, for 2013. One more. There we go. And I mentioned her earlier videos. She's beautiful. Her name is Sani, but I think of her as Sunny because she's just always happy and smiley and blonde and pretty and very talented. And then someone I just discovered this month, a, a viewer suggested her to me, and thank you, thank you. I love watching her. She's another big-time celebrity makeup artist. Her name is Monica Blunder. And... She's Austrian, but lives in LA, and um, wow, just, she's really cool. Okay, I'll link them all below. Where were we? Number nine, are you planning to wear lipstick or gloss when the ball drops at midnight, and if so, which one? Well, it's now, I think it's January 9th, so I'll tell you what I did. I started off the night with a Revlon Color Burst uh, in Fuchsia, which is a pretty deep, bright pink, and I knew that as the night wore on with eating and drinking, it would just leave a stain, so when it came time to kiss my husband, I would not get goo all over his face. And I also kissed my kids. They were not pleased. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. What is your best New Year's Eve memory? You know, for me, New Year's Eve is about being with my family. It's not about forcing this party atmosphere and trying to make a big night of it. So almost every year since we've had kids, we've stayed in and done a little fondue party, just the four of us. And I've loved that. When we were dating and engaged and before we had kids, we would go see a play every New Year's Eve. And then just this last New Year's Eve, I was lucky enough to have my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and my nieces and nephew in town, and we invited a bunch of our friends over, and we just hung out and sat by the fire and ate good food, and the kids ran around throwing those little pop things on the ground and blowing things up out in the 
street, so it was a very Texas New Year's Eve, and we had a blast. Um, what was the best thing that happened to you this year? It's been a good year. Uh, I've had a really good life, and it just gets better every year, but I think turning 40 actually was the best thing that happened to me this year in 2013. Almost 41 now, but um, it just kind of puts everything in perspective, like all the goals that I'd wanted to achieve, I've achieved, and then some. And um, I'm in a good place, and my family's healthy, and my husband's healthy, and well, he's my family, but just personally and professionally, I'm in a good place. And and turning 40 just puts that all in perspective. And I enjoy I enjoy my 40s. They're fun. They're very fun. You can get away with a little bit more when you're 40. Um, describe the year 2013 in three words. No. I hate those. No, it's, it was a great year. They're always good. Most years are pretty good, I have to say. What activity or hobby are you finally going to take up in 2014? Um, I'm just going to be a little crass here and say I'm going to start moving my ass. I am by nature a very sedentary person and that, that needs to change. So I'm just going to try to move more. Walk the dogs more, not just let them run around in the backyard. Use the elliptical that is collecting dust. Actually, it hasn't for the last three days. I have walked on the elliptical for 30 minutes every day. And I'm going to start doing that. If I'm watching TV or YouTube, why can't I do it on the elliptical, right? So just moving. Moving my butt. Um, hypothetically, you win the lottery in 2014. If you could donate to any charity in 2014, which charity is dear to you and why? Whew. Um, it's hard to pick just one. We are involved in a lot of things. But I would say, for me personally, it would have to be something literacy-based. I would probably give all of it, if it just won, to San Antonio Library Foundation. San Antonio has a one in four illiteracy rate. The 25% of the San Antonio population is functionally illiterate. And the libraries, to me, the li where I grew up, the library was not just a place to go get books. It was a, a not a safe place. I wasn't in a dangerous area, but it was like a, a home away from home. It's a community within the community. And even though we're moving towards Kindles and e-readers and all that, there's just something about a library that makes a community a community and not just a collection of homes. And um, love the library system, love what they do for all of our communities. So I would give all that money to the San Antonio Library Foundation and I'd be very happy to do it. Um, what food or beverage are you going to give up in 2014? I'm not going to completely give anything up because as my very wise 15 year old son told me, extremism is never good. Moderation is always a good thing in all things, whether it's religion or politics or eating or exercise or pretty much anything. Moderation is always the way to go. Very smart young man. And so I am very much going to moderate the amount of sugar that I put in my mouth because there just isn't isn't really any reason why I should be eating more sugar. Just not. So as I'm 40, I am realizing there are certain things I'm going to have to give up if I want to live to see, I don't know, 50. So sugar would be one of them. What food or beverage are you finally going to try in 2014? I don't know if there's not that much out there that I haven't tried that I would want to try. Still haven't had a Frito pie and don't think I'm ever going to. Google that. It's disgusting. It's a Texas thing and I'm never putting that in my mouth. Okay. Uh, if you could have one of your dreams come true for 2014, what would it be and why? I don't really dream for me anymore. I'm more than content with what life has handed me. And I dream, it sounds so cheesy, but when you have kids, you don't dream for yourself anymore. You dream for your kids. And so obviously I have dreams for, for my children as my oldest son gets closer to graduating high school and hopefully going on to college and so forth. Oop, there go the dogs. I dream about, you know, their futures and what, what I hope for them. So that's what I think about at night, you know. More like anxiety. Will they get into the college that they want? Will they get into college? Will they get into the right college? Blah, blah, blah. So I just, I dream for their lives to be easy and fulfilling. And um, I dream of them growing up and being responsible citizens. That's the stuff I dream about. So, I don't know. That's kind of a downer now. That's not a fun way to end the video. But that is that. Those are all the questions. I guess there was some kind of vegan bend to these. But I just, that's not my thing. So, anyway, thank you so much. Sorry that this is a little late. I usually put up videos every Monday and Thursday at 6 a.m. Central Time. So this was a little behind schedule. But um, thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to go paint my nails. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.